Hi, I'm Bob. Let's finish the last three computer exercises for Chapter 15. Instrumental Variables Estimation and Two-Stage Least Squares In the textbook, Introductory Econometrics, a Modern Approach, the seventh edition by Professor Jeffrey Woodridge. We will continue to use Stata to solve the problems. Computer exercise 11 is about the effect of school choice on academic achievement. In part 1, of the 990 students in the sample, how many had a voucher available for four years? How many students actually attended a choice school for four years? The categorical variable select years indicates the number of years a student was selected for a voucher. We use the command tabulate to find the number of observations of each category. We find that 468 students were never awarded a voucher. 108 students had a voucher available for four years. The variable choice years is the number of years that a student attended a choice school. We again use the tabulate command to find that 56 students attended a choice school for four years. In part two, run a simple regression of choice years on select years. Are these variables related in the direction you expected? How strong is the relationship? Is select years a sensible IV candidate for choice years? We estimate the simple regression by OLS. The slope estimate is 0 0.77. It is statistically significant at the 1% level, with a t-statistic of 60.93. The two variables are highly correlated. The selected years of the voucher variable is an instrumental variable candidate for the years of attending the choice schools because the instrument relevance requirement is satisfied. On the other hand, vouchers were chosen by lottery among those who applied. So the number of years a student was selected for a voucher is random among those who applied. The instrument exogeneity requirement will likely to be met if the application is also random. In part three, run a simple regression of the student's percentile score on the year of attending the choice schools. What do you find? Is this what you expected? What happens if you add the variables black, Hispanic and female? The simple regression gives a significant and negative slope estimate. The negative effect of school choice on scores is not expected. The negative effect becomes insignificant after adding three control variables to the model. In part 4, why my choice years be endogenous in the following equation? The unobserved ability and family background are factors that affect the scores. These unobserved variables are in the error term mu1. They are also correlated with the years of attending the choice schools. So the OLS estimates suffer from omitted variable bias. For example, the students who did not do well in past tests have stronger motivation to switch to a choice school. Lower math scores are associated with more years in choice schools. It can be seen as a self-selection problem or reverse causality. Without considering unobserved factors like this leads to a biased OLS estimate. In part 5, estimate the equation in part 4 by instrumental variables using select years 
as the IV for choice years. Does using IV produce a positive effect of attending a choice school? What do you make of the coefficients on the other explanatory variables? Using IV does not produce a positive effect of attending a choice school on academic performance. The estimate is still negative and insignificant. It implies that school choice has no positive effect on academic performance. The coefficients on the black and Hispanic explanatory variables show a gap in math scores between different ethnic groups. The coefficient on female shows that the academic gender gap is not statistically significant. In part 6, to control for the possibility that prior achievement affects participating in the lottery, add the math score in 1990 to the equation in part 4. Estimate the equation by OLS and IV and compare the results for beta 1. For the IV estimate, how much is each year in a choice school worth on the mass percentile score? Is this a practically large effect? After adding the past mass score to the model to control for the student's ability, the effect of choice school on academic performance becomes positive. We store the results from OLS and IV estimations and compare them in a table. The OLS estimate is 0 0.4 and insignificant. The two-stage least squares estimate is 1.8 and statistically different from 0 at the 5% level. It implies that one more year in the choice school increases the mass percentile score by 1.8 points. It is a practically large effect. From this exercise, we learn that because the application to choice schools is not random, the IV years of choice schools selected is not random too. We assume that the choice school application is related to the student's past math performance. So we should control the past math score in the model. After controlling for it, the years of the choice school selected are not correlated with the other term and becomes a valid instrumental variable for the actual years of attendance to the choice school. As a result, the two-stage least squares estimate is a consistent estimate of the choice of school's effect on the academic performance. In Part 7, we will answer why the analysis from Part 6 is not entirely convincing. Compared with Part 5, what happens to the number of observations and why? Compared with Part 5, the number of observations drops dramatically from 990 to 328. The past mass scores are not available for two-thirds of the observations. The data attrition may not be random. It is a sample selection problem if we want to analyze the entire population. So we may need to control for the mechanism of the data attrition if possible. In part 8, we replace the categorical explanatory variable with the dummy variables and estimate the equation by IV. Describe your findings. Do they make sense? The dummy variables of the years of attending choice schools allow different marginal effects for different years in the choice schools, whereas the categorical explanatory variable in the previous models assumes the marginal effects of different years are the same. 
Here, the base group is the students who did not attend the choice schools. The IV estimates show that only the students who attended the choice schools for four years have a significant difference in their math scores from the base group. They have 14 points higher scores than the comparable students who did not go to choice schools. It makes sense that the choice school effect is not linear. Thank you for watching this video and subscribing to my YouTube channel. See you next time.